on AM 750 and now 95.5 FM News Talk WSV. still in charge of this country. That we got four more days. Now those that have not already voted, I don't have to say, make sure you vote. Because if you do not vote, and vote in an informed manner, you're part of the problem, not part of the solution. It's just that simple. And I know that the liberals and the media try to confuse you and try to confuse people to try to discourage them from voting, it boils down to five simple words that my colleague Neil Boyce used earlier this week, and I have been quoting him. The choice is simple. You are voting for more government or less government. It's just that simple. That's what we're voting for. More taxes or less taxes. That's what we're voting for. More, less individual liberties or more individual liberties. That's what this election is all about. That's what this election is all about. So in four more days, we're going to send a message. And you know, it amazes me how, as I said, there are more commercials, ads, and stories in the media about trying to discourage people, trying to get people to stay home. No, we got to get out. We got to get out and vote so we can be a part of the solution and not part of the problem. Because America, we have a real big problem. And we're not going to solve that big problem overnight. We're going to have to solve it little by little. We're going to have to solve it little by little, starting with the results that will come in Tuesday night all across this country. All across this country. That's how we start to solve this problem. And just so you know, I, along with Scott Slade, will be doing the anchoring for the election results on Tuesday night. So Scott Slade's going to start it off and I'm going to take over at 8 o'clock. We're going to go all the way up to 11 because we want to make sure that the results are in because there are going to be some tight races from across this country and you'll be able to hear all of the latest results right here on AM 750 and now 95.5 FM. So Tuesday night, that's where you want to tune in. We're also going to have some analysis by Jamie Dupree. Bill Crane is going to be there. And we're going to be giving you the results as they come in from across the country, talking about the implications of those results. So you will be up to date. Because remember, our objective is to wake up on November the 3rd with a smile on our face. That is our objective. With a smile on our face. And remember, it doesn't end on November 3rd. We go into phase two of taking back our government. That's what happens on November 3rd. We go into phase two. It's called keeping their feet to the fire. That's what this is all about. And that's what we're going to do. Now don't forget, coming up at 8 o'clock, we're going to do rapid fire. So at the 8 o'clock break, we're going to form a line right here. Shane B is going to be there with the microphone so we can take your questions. And we can do live rapid fire like we do every night on the radio. And you all are part of the radio show tonight right here in downtown Duluth. Oh, yeah. And I know that some people are calling this Halloween weekend. No, I call it Get Out the Vote weekend. This is get out the vote weekend as far as I'm concerned because you're here to, ex to show your support and to show that you have either voted or you're going to vote and to send a message because this is what the liberals and the people in Washington, D.C. who consider themselves the political elite, 
they just can't quite comprehend yet. You are making a statement. The people that are here tonight, as well as the others, and tomorrow, I leave to go to Florida to do two Tea Party events. I'm going to do two Tea Party events in Michigan on Sunday. I'm going to do three Tea Party events in Wisconsin on Monday. I'm going to do one in New Hampshire on Tuesday. Why? To make sure that people stay informed and inspired. That's why I'm glad that you came out tonight to help kick off this whirlwind weekend tour. To, to make, he said, raise Cain. <laughs> I raised two little Canes. One of 38 and one of 32. Now I got three little Cain Canes. You know, 11-year-old Cain Cain and a 6-year-old Cain Cain and a 1-year-old Cain Cain. They're called Grand Canes. That's what this is all about. Because as I tell people all the time, this isn't about us. We're going to be fine. This is about our children and our grandchildren. That's what this is about. Because just like your parents, my parents wanted to give us a little bit better start in life, we want to give our kids and our grandkids a little bit better start, start in life. But it begins with giving them the greatest country in the world that's still the greatest country in the world and that's how some of us want to keep it. Well, that's what it's all about. That's what it is all about. And so you've been working tirelessly, we've been working tirelessly, and the reason we've been doing it is because we, we do not want the, the United States of America to become the United States of New Europe. Not on our watch. That ain't gonna happen. That's simply not going to happen. And remember what Thomas Jefferson said. Is that what he said? <laughs> Some people believe that government is the answer. And remember that a government big enough to give people everything that they want is big enough to take everything that they have. And that's what's happening. And it, it, it amuses me when liberals say, I had one this morning when I was substituting for boards, calls up and says, well, you, you gave George Bush eight years, and you only want to give Obama two years. Too long. I said, I said let, let me explain this to you. <laughs> First of all, and I'm not trying to defend George Bush. First of all, when George Bush was president, the last two years of his second term, the Congress was controlled by Democrats. And when George Bush and the Republicans tried to reform Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the Democrats blocked it. Remember what you heard Barney Frank say? Uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, there's nothing wrong. Uh, there's not a crisis, and it led to the meltdown. When George Bush was president, we had unemployment around 5%. Now it is about 9.5%. When George Bush was president, over the course of those eight years, the gross domestic product was growing anywhere from 3, 4, and sometimes 5%, and now we can barely get over 1%. And here's the big one. In George Bush's eight years, I'm not trying to defend George Bush, I'm trying to draw a parallel and get the liberals to understand the facts. They don't like the facts. Four trillion dollars was added to the budget in eight years, and this administration has added four trillion dollars in nearly two years. I have a problem with that. So the problems have accelerated. So whenever the liberals want to give you this hogwash, that's a family-friendly word. <laughs> when they want to give you this hogwash about, well, you know, George, they still want to blame it on Bush. Why? Because they can't handle the truth. And the only thing that they have left is blaming on Bush and name-calling. And I have been called so many names, folks, <laughs> that I have a list You've heard me say this. I've got, I'm going I'm to share my list with you. I'm going to have Shane and B put it up at some point. The reason I haven't put it on the Debbie Herman Cain Show webpage is because it keeps growing. 
<laughs> it keeps getting longer. So that list is going to continue to get long. So what I might do is after Tuesday, when we can wake up on the morning of November 3rd and realize that the people have spoken, that the people have spoken, then I might post my list of all of the names that I have been called. And I got to tell you, there are some doozies. There are some doozies. And the one that I liked the most was when this guy called me shameless. He said that I was shameless because I dared to criticize our black president as a black man. There goes that liberal train again. They can't handle the truth, so they try to drown.